Actor, comedian, and commercial pitchman Paul Hogan won a Golden Globe and an Oscar nomination for his role in the extremely popular 1986 comedy Crocodile Dundee. The movie earned $328 million worldwide, and its sequel brought in another $239 million, making Hogan one of the biggest stars of the 80s. But he never quite made a name for himself internationally outside of playing the role that made him famous. So, whatever happened to Crocodile Dundee? Marriage Problems Hogan was married to his first wife, Nolene, for nearly 30 years, but while Hogan was making Crocodile Dundee, he fell in love with his on-screen romantic interest, American actress Linda Kozlowski. He divorced Nolene, married Kozlowski in 1990, and the pair had a son together, expanding a family that already included Hogan's five children with his first wife. Their marriage lasted for well over 20 years, but it eventually ended when Kozlowski filed for divorce in 2013, citing that they grew apart but also because she was tired of living in her husband's shadow. Who knew that Hogan even cast a shadow in 2013? He declined huge movies. Some actors have the luxury of making only the movies and shows they really want to make, and Hogan thought that he fit that description. Dating back to his early days as a writer and star of his own TV show, Hogan liked to have creative control, and he rejected a number of projects that could have advanced his career. He turned down the lead role in Ghost to make his own movie about a ghost almost an angel. Ghost cast Patrick Swayze and was a smash hit, but you probably haven't even heard of what Hogan ended up doing. Paul Hogan is almost an angel. For a guy with Academy Award nominations, a major movie franchise, and an Oscars hosting stint under his belt, Hogan has shockingly few credits to his name. Apart from his Crocodile Dundee films and Almost an Angel, he starred in just four other feature films, Lightning Jack, Flipper, Strange Bedfellows, and Charlie and Boots. The last two weren't even commercially released in the United States. By 1989, America had already moved on to fellow Australian Yahoo Serious anyhow. Now. Australia's colossal comedy hit, starring its newest comedy hero, comes to the States. And we all saw how that turned out just a few years later. I know those words, but that sign makes no sense. Entrepreneur. Back in 1993, crowdfunding wasn't really a thing, so Hogan created the first ever film trust to fund his cowboy comedy Lightning Jack and placed it on the Australian Stock Exchange. The trust raised 35 million Australian dollars, and investors were to see a payout after seven years. However, there probably weren't too many profits to go around. Lightning Jack was a box office bomb, despite it being one of Cuba Gooding Jr.'s earliest big screen roles, earning back about half of the money it had raised. As scheduled, the Lightning Lightning Jack Film Trust was delisted from the Australian Stock Exchange in 2001, but Hogan was decades ahead of his time in his approach to funding films. Take that, Zach Braff. Crocodile Dund 3 Late after the character's popularity peaked in the late 80s, Hogan brought back Crocodile Dundee one more time for 2001's Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. It earned just $25 million in the US, and more surprisingly, only $7 million in Hogan's native Australia. Critics hated it, and it later earned a Razzie Award nomination for Worst Remake or Sequel. Matthew Berry, one of the film's writers, told the podcast How Did This Get Made? that he and writing partner Eric Abrams pitched their idea for a third Dundee film to Hogan. He approved it, and the writers came back three months later with a screenplay. And that's when things got… weird. Basically, he then rewrites all, pretty much the entire script. He throws a couple of new things in there. While the general plot was unchanged, Hogan claimed he'd rewrote so much that he should be the only credited screenwriter, and subsequently the only writer who would receive residuals. The Writers Guild wound up ruling in favor of the original writers, and Hogan protested the decision. If Hogan ever wants to bring the character back to the screen, he needs to offer Barry and Abrams the option to write the script. How does Crocodile Dundee Goes to Hell sound? Tax Trouble after his name came up in a 2005 government investigation into offshore tax havens, Hogan battled Australia over millions in allegedly unpaid taxes. A closer look at the actor's finances found evidence that he hadn't paid taxes on more than 37 million earned, dating back to 1986. Although Hogan lived in the US and paid American taxes during much of that time, he was still considered an Australian citizen, and was not only their tourism spokesperson, but 1985's Australian of the Year. Come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. 
In 2010, Hogan left his home in the US to attend his mother's funeral in Sydney, Australia, where tax officials served him with papers preventing him from leaving the country until his case could be resolved. The matter was settled after two years of mediation under confidential terms, which probably involved a didgeridoo and a couple of koalas. <laughs> He took his show on the road. In 2013, Hogan returned to performing and writing with a comical biographical one-man show in which he talked about his colorful life. So how much of this new show have you prepared? It's, it's touring in November, December. Where are you at? As oh, it's easy. Now? I've been working on it for like 40 years. An Evening with Hoags was a huge success, selling out dates around Australia. Hogan brought back the tour for another string of appearances, Hoags Live in 2015. Retired. By the time Hogan found international success with Crocodile Dundee in 1986, he was 47 years old, a late bloomer to say the least. He'd been working in entertainment for well over a decade at that point. He's since joked that he works less because he's instituted a self-imposed exile. Whatever he wants to call it, Hogan is now pushing 80, a perfectly reasonable time to slow down a bit. We'll always have his glowing endorsement of Australia. Oh. Ah, pleased to meet you. It's okay, he's Australian. Maybe I better go there someday. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.